Have you ever wondered why we fall in life? Today in this video, we will dive into a topic that resonates with all of us at some point in our lives. Why do we fall? Lesson 1. Low Confidence Low confidence is a pervasive issue that affects many individuals, hindering their potential and limiting their ability to achieve personal and professional goals. In Buddhism, low confidence is understood as a product of ignorance and misunderstanding about the nature of self. Buddhism teaches that the root cause of low confidence is avidya, or ignorance. This ignorance manifests as a lack of understanding of our true nature and our interconnectedness with all beings. We often identify with our physical form, our thoughts, and our emotions, which are all impermanent and subject to change. This misidentification creates a fragile sense of self that is easily shaken by external circumstances. The Buddha taught that our true nature is beyond these fleeting attributes. Each of us possesses Buddha nature, an inherent potential for wisdom, compassion, and enlightenment. When we fail to recognize this, we become trapped in a cycle of self-doubt and low confidence. By understanding and embracing our true nature, we can begin to dismantle the barriers that prevent us from realizing our full potential. Mindfulness, or sati, is a cornerstone of Buddhist practice. It involves being fully present in each moment, observing our thoughts and feelings without judgment. Through mindfulness meditation, we can develop greater self-awareness and begin to recognize the patterns of negative thinking that undermine our confidence. For example, when a thought arises such as, I am not good enough, we can observe it mindfully, acknowledging its presence without becoming attached to it. By doing so, we create a space between ourselves and our thoughts, allowing us to see them for what they are, temporary, and not necessarily reflective of reality. One of the fundamental teachings of Buddhism is anicca, or impermanence. Everything in life is in a constant state of flux, including our thoughts and emotions. By understanding that our feelings of low confidence are impermanent, we can begin to loosen their grip on us. When we recognize that these feelings will pass, we can cultivate patience and compassion towards ourselves. This perspective helps us to avoid becoming overly attached to our current state and encourages us to continue practicing and growing, knowing that change is inevitable. Loving kindness, or metta, is a practice of developing unconditional love and compassion for ourselves and others. This practice involves repeating phrases such as, may I be happy, may I be healthy, and may I be at peace. By directing these wishes towards ourselves, we can begin to counteract the negative self-talk that erodes our confidence. Meta practice helps to foster a positive and nurturing relationship with ourselves. As we develop a sense of self-compassion, we become more resilient and better equipped to face challenges with confidence. In Buddhism, the Sangha, or community of practitioners, plays a vital role in our spiritual development. Surrounding ourselves with supportive and like-minded individuals can greatly enhance our confidence. In a community, we can share our struggles and successes receive encouragement, and learn from the experiences of others. Engaging with a Sangha provides a sense of belonging and reminds us that we are not alone in our journey. This collective support can be a powerful antidote to feelings of low confidence, helping us to stay motivated and inspired. In Buddhism, failure is not seen as a defeat but as a valuable teacher. The Buddha taught that every experience, including failure, has the potential to teach us important lessons. By viewing failure through this lens, we can transform it into an opportunity for growth. Buddhism teaches that all beings are interconnected through the principle of dependent origination. Our actions, thoughts, and feelings are influenced by countless factors and in turn influence the world around us. Recognizing this interconnectedness can help us to understand that our feelings of low confidence are not solely our burden to bear, they are shaped by a multitude of conditions. This understanding can foster a sense of humility and compassion, both for ourselves and for others. It reminds us that we are part of a larger whole and our individual struggles are part of the human experience. This broader perspective can alleviate the pressure we place on ourselves and help us to approach our challenges with a more open and compassionate mindset.
Low confidence is a common challenge, but it is one that can be overcome through the wisdom and practices of Buddhism. By cultivating mindfulness, understanding impermanence, practicing loving-kindness, exerting right effort, seeking community support, embracing failure as a teacher, and recognizing our interconnectedness, we can build a strong foundation of self-assurance. The journey towards greater confidence is not about becoming someone else. It is about uncovering the innate potential that lies within each of us. As we align ourselves with the teachings of the Buddha, we can transform our self-doubt into a powerful force for personal and spiritual growth. Through consistent practice and a compassionate mindset, we can rise above our challenges and realize our true potential. Lesson 2. Don't believe in yourself. The notion of not believing in oneself is a profound hurdle that many individuals face. It often manifests as a lack of self-worth, self-doubt, and a feeling of inadequacy. Buddhism provides a wealth of teachings and practices to help us understand and overcome this pervasive issue. The journey towards self-belief in Buddhism is deeply intertwined with recognizing our true nature, practicing self-compassion, and cultivating mindfulness. In Buddhism, the concept of Buddha nature is central. It posits that every sentient being inherently possesses the potential for enlightenment. This potential is not something that can be given or taken away. It is our true nature. However, our true nature is often obscured by layers of ignorance, delusion, and negative mental states. When we don't believe in ourselves, we are usually fixated on our perceived flaws, failures, and the negative judgments of others. We fail to see the underlying purity and potential within us. The teachings of the Buddha encourage us to look beyond these superficial layers. Through meditation and mindfulness, we can begin to peel back these layers and catch glimpses of our true nature. This recognition is the first step toward building a genuine belief in ourselves. By practicing mindfulness, we learn to observe our thoughts and emotions without attachment or aversion. This observation helps us realize that our negative self-beliefs are transient and do not define who we are. They are merely passing thoughts and feelings. As we deepen our practice, we begin to see our inherent Buddha nature, which is pure, wise, and capable. Self-compassion is a powerful antidote to self-doubt and a lack of belief in oneself. It involves treating ourselves with the same kindness, understanding, and compassion that we would offer to a dear friend. Buddhism emphasizes the practice of loving-kindness, metta, and compassion, karuna, not only toward others, but also toward ourselves. When we fail or make mistakes, it's easy to fall into a pattern of harsh self-criticism. This negative self-talk reinforces our lack of self-belief. Instead, Buddhism teaches us to respond with compassion. Acknowledge your mistakes, understand that they are part of the human experience, and offer yourself kindness and forgiveness. A practical way to cultivate self-compassion is through meta-meditation. In this practice, we begin by sending loving-kindness to ourselves. We repeat phrases such as, May I be happy, may I be healthy, may I be safe, may I live with ease. By focusing on ourselves first, we build a foundation of self-compassion that naturally extends to others. This practice helps to counteract the harsh inner critic and fosters a supportive inner dialogue. Mindfulness is a cornerstone of Buddhist practice and plays a crucial role in developing self-belief. Mindfulness involves paying attention to the present moment with a non-judgmental awareness. This practice helps us to become aware of our habitual patterns of self-doubt and negative thinking. Through mindfulness, we learn to observe these patterns without getting caught up in them. We create a space between our thoughts and our reactions. This space allows us to choose a different response, one that is based on understanding and compassion rather than self-judgment and doubt. Embracing impermanence helps us to let go of our attachment to negative self-beliefs. We understand that just as joy and sorrow come and go, so do our feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. This realization brings a sense of freedom and lightness. We no longer have to be defined by our transient thoughts and feelings. One of the major obstacles to self-belief is the tendency to compare ourselves to others. 
When we measure our worth against the achievements and qualities of others, we often come up short. Buddhism teaches that each person's path is unique and that comparison is a form of attachment that leads to suffering. Focus on your own journey. Recognize and appreciate your unique strengths and qualities. Understand that everyone has their own struggles and that appearances can be deceptive. By letting go of comparison, you free yourself to grow at your own pace and in your own way. In Buddhism, the Sangha, or community of practitioners, plays a vital role in supporting and encouraging one another on the path. Being part of a Sangha provides a sense of belonging and shared purpose. It's a space where you can share your struggles and triumphs, knowing that others are walking the same path. The support and encouragement from a Sangha can greatly enhance your belief in yourself. When others believe in your potential, it becomes easier for you to believe in it as well. Participate in group meditations, discussions, and retreats. Engage with your community and draw strength from the collective wisdom and compassion. Not believing in oneself is a common and significant challenge, but it is not insurmountable. Buddhism offers profound teachings and practical tools to help us recognize our true nature, practice self-compassion, cultivate mindfulness, embrace impermanence, develop right effort, let go of comparison, and draw strength from our community. By integrating these teachings into our lives, we can transform self-doubt into self-belief and unlock our full potential. Remember, the journey towards self-belief is a gradual process, but with patience and perseverance, you will discover the boundless wisdom and capability that reside within you. Lesson 3. Few interest in improving yourself. In our journey through life, there are times when we may feel a lack of motivation or interest in improving ourselves. This stagnation can be a significant barrier to personal growth and spiritual development. Buddhism offers profound insights into why this occurs and how we can rekindle our enthusiasm for self-improvement. Ignorance is a fundamental misunderstanding of our true nature and the nature of reality. When we are ignorant of our potential for growth and enlightenment, we may not see the value in striving for self-improvement. Attachment and aversion also play a role. We may be attached to our comfort zones or averse to the effort and discomfort that change often requires. Mindfulness, sadhi, is a powerful tool in overcoming a lack of interest in self-improvement. By practicing mindfulness, we become more aware of our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This heightened awareness allows us to recognize the patterns that keep us stuck in a state of complacency. For example, we may notice that we habitually avoid challenging tasks because we fear failure. Once we are aware of these patterns, we can begin to change them. Mindfulness also helps us to stay present and appreciate the small steps we take towards improvement. Often, we become discouraged because we focus too much on the end goal and overlook the progress we are making. By staying present, we can celebrate each small victory which can boost our motivation and interest in continuing our efforts. Discipline is essential for overcoming a lack of interest in self-improvement. In Buddhism, discipline is not about forcing ourselves to do things we don't want to do, but rather about developing a consistent practice that supports our growth. This practice can include meditation, mindfulness, ethical conduct, and other activities that align with our intentions. Developing discipline requires us to create a routine and stick to it, even when we don't feel like it. This consistency helps to build momentum and makes it easier to continue our efforts over time. Additionally, discipline can be strengthened by surrounding ourselves with supportive people who encourage and inspire us. One of the reasons we may lose interest in self-improvement is that we see it as a burden rather than a source of joy. Buddhism teaches that true joy comes from within and that it can be found in the process of growth itself. By shifting our perspective and finding joy in the small steps we take towards improvement, we can sustain our interest and motivation. To find joy in the journey, we can practice gratitude and appreciation for the opportunities we have to learn and grow. We can also engage in activities that we enjoy and that contribute to our self-improvement. For example, if we want to improve our physical health, 
We can find forms of exercise that we enjoy rather than forcing ourselves to do something we dislike. Buddhism teaches that all things are impermanent, anicca, and constantly changing. This understanding can help us to overcome a lack of interest in self-improvement by reminding us that our current state is not fixed. No matter how stuck or unmotivated we may feel, we have the capacity to change and grow. By embracing the impermanence of life, we can approach self-improvement with a sense of curiosity and openness. We can see each moment as an opportunity to learn something new and to become a better version of ourselves. This perspective helps to keep our interest alive and encourages us to keep moving forward. Compassion, Karuna, is a central teaching in Buddhism and plays a vital role in self-improvement. When we are compassionate towards ourselves, we are more likely to treat ourselves with kindness and understanding. This self-compassion helps to counteract the negative self-judgment that can sap our motivation and interest in growth. By practicing compassion, we can also develop a deeper sense of connection to others. This connection can inspire us to improve ourselves so that we can better serve and support those around us. When we see our self-improvement as a way to contribute to the well-being of others, we are more likely to stay committed and motivated. Perfectionism can be a significant barrier to self-improvement. When we hold ourselves to unrealistic standards, we may become overwhelmed and lose interest in trying to improve. Buddhism teaches the importance of letting go of perfectionism and embracing the concept of good enough. By accepting ourselves as we are and recognizing that growth is a gradual process, we can relieve the pressure to be perfect. This acceptance allows us to take risks, make mistakes, and learn from them without becoming discouraged. It helps us to stay interested in our journey of self-improvement by making it more manageable and less intimidating. A lack of interest in self-improvement is a common challenge, but it is not insurmountable. By understanding the root causes and applying the teachings of Buddhism, we can rekindle our enthusiasm for growth and development. Mindfulness, clear intentions, discipline, joy, impermanence, compassion, and letting go of perfectionism are all tools that can help us to stay motivated and committed to our self-improvement goals. Buddhism teaches that every moment is an opportunity for growth and that our potential for improvement is limitless. By embracing these teachings, we can transform our lives and continue to evolve towards our highest potential. Remember, the journey of self-improvement is not just about achieving specific goals, but about becoming the best version of ourselves and contributing to the well-being of all beings. Lesson 4. Thinking best but doing work is not good properly. Thinking the best but not acting properly is a common pitfall on the path to personal and spiritual growth. In Buddhism, this discrepancy between intention and action is a critical issue to address, as it can lead to frustration, stagnation, and a sense of failure. To understand and overcome this challenge, we must delve into the nature of our thoughts, the obstacles that prevent proper action, and the practical steps we can take to align our intentions with our deeds. In Buddhism, the mind is often compared to a garden that requires careful tending. Our thoughts are like seeds. Positive thoughts can lead to beautiful blooms, while negative ones can result in weeds that choke our potential. When we think the best, we plant seeds of aspiration, hope, and positive change. If these seeds are not nurtured through proper action, they fail to bear fruit. Fear of failure, fear of judgment, and general anxiety can paralyze us. These fears often stem from our attachment to outcomes and our ego's desire for approval and success. Buddhism teaches that by practicing mindfulness, sati, we can observe our fears without being controlled by them. Recognizing that fear is a natural part of the human experience can help us move beyond it. Sometimes, we have good intentions but lack the necessary skills or knowledge to act effectively. The Buddha encouraged the cultivation of wisdom, prajna, which involves continuous learning and self-improvement. Seeking guidance, studying, and practicing new skills can bridge the gap between our intentions and our actions. These are common impediments that prevent us from acting on our good intentions. 
Buddhism identifies sloth and torpor, thina mitta, as hindrances to spiritual progress. Overcoming these requires energy, viriya, another aspect of the Noble Eightfold Path. Developing discipline and cultivating enthusiasm for our goals can help us combat procrastination and laziness. Regular mindfulness practice helps us stay aware of our intentions and actions. By reflecting on our daily activities, we can identify discrepancies between what we plan to do and what we actually do. This awareness is the first step in making necessary adjustments. Vague intentions are less likely to result in concrete actions. By setting clear, specific goals, we create a roadmap for our actions. Prioritizing these goals helps us focus our energy on what truly matters, making it easier to follow through. Establishing a daily routine that incorporates time for self-improvement, spiritual practice, and goal-oriented activities can help us stay on track. Discipline is cultivated through consistent practice, and over time, it becomes a habit that supports our intentions. Our intentions are often noble because they involve a desire to help others or improve ourselves. By regularly practicing loving-kindness, metta, meditation, we strengthen our resolve to act out of compassion. This practice not only benefits others, but also reinforces our commitment to positive action. Sharing our goals and intentions with others can provide motivation and accountability. Joining a community of like-minded individuals, such as a meditation group or a support network, can offer encouragement and guidance. Accountability partners can help us stay committed to our actions. Perfectionism can be a significant barrier to action. The fear of not doing something perfectly can prevent us from doing it at all. Buddhism teaches the importance of accepting imperfection and seeing mistakes as opportunities for learning and growth. By embracing a growth mindset, we can take action without the pressure of perfection. Periodically reviewing our progress helps us stay aligned with our intentions. If we find that our actions are not matching our goals, we can make adjustments. This iterative process ensures that we remain on the right path and continue to move forward. Thinking the best is an essential starting point, but without proper action, our intentions remain unfulfilled. Buddhism provides a comprehensive framework for aligning our thoughts and actions through mindfulness, ethical conduct, and continuous self-improvement. By understanding the obstacles that prevent us from acting properly and taking practical steps to overcome them, we can bridge the gap between intention and action. This alignment leads to personal growth, spiritual development, and a more meaningful life. Lesson 5. Hesitation. Hesitation is a natural human response to uncertainty and fear. It often manifests as a pause or delay in decision-making or taking action, resulting from doubts about the potential outcomes or one's abilities. In Buddhism, hesitation is understood as a hindrance on the path to spiritual and personal growth. It can prevent us from making progress and realizing our full potential. One of the primary reasons for hesitation is the fear of making mistakes or failing. This fear can be paralyzing, preventing us from taking necessary steps towards our goals. Buddhism teaches that failure is not a definitive end but a part of the learning process. The concept of impermanence, anicca, reminds us that everything, including failure, is transient and ever-changing. By embracing this understanding, we can reduce our fear and become more willing to take risks. Lack of confidence in one's abilities is another significant factor contributing to hesitation. When we doubt our skills and potential, we are less likely to take action. Buddhism encourages us to develop self-awareness through mindfulness. Sadi. By observing our thoughts and emotions without judgment, we can recognize patterns of self-doubt and gradually replace them with self-compassion and positive affirmations. Analyzing situations excessively can lead to analysis paralysis, where too much deliberation prevents decisive action. Buddhism advocates for the practice of present moment awareness. By focusing on the here and now, we can avoid getting caught up in endless cycles of what-ifs and instead make clear, grounded decisions. Hesitation often occurs when we are overly attached to specific outcomes. 
This attachment can create anxiety about achieving a particular result, leading to an action. The Buddhist teaching of non-attachment, Viraja, helps us let go of rigid expectations. By cultivating an attitude of acceptance and equanimity, we can take action without being overly concerned about the results. Wisdom in Buddhism is not just intellectual understanding, but a deep experiential insight into the nature of reality. By studying and contemplating the teachings of the Buddha, particularly the concepts of impermanence, non-self, anatta, and suffering, dukkha, we develop a more realistic perspective on life. This wisdom helps us see that our fears and doubts are often based on misconceptions. With clearer vision, we can move forward with greater confidence and less hesitation. Having a clear sense of purpose can reduce hesitation. When our intentions are well-defined, we are more likely to take action. Spend time reflecting on your goals and values and write them down. This clarity will serve as a guide when you face decisions and uncertainties. Large tasks can be overwhelming, leading to hesitation. Breaking tasks into smaller manageable steps can make them seem less daunting and easier to tackle. This approach also provides a sense of accomplishment as each step is completed, boosting confidence and reducing the likelihood of hesitation. Focus on the process rather than the outcome. By committing to doing your best without being overly concerned about the results, you can act more freely and decisively. Remember the Buddhist teaching that the results are not entirely within your control, but your effort and intention are. Hesitation occurs because we feel isolated or unsure. Seeking guidance from a teacher, mentor, or supportive community can provide the encouragement and clarity needed to move forward. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of Sangha, or community, in supporting our spiritual journey. Take time to reflect on past instances where you acted decisively and achieved positive outcomes. Reminding yourself of these successes can build confidence and reduce hesitation in facing new challenges. Positive affirmations and visualization techniques can help reprogram your mind to reduce hesitation. Affirmations such as, I am capable, I trust myself, and I am confident in my decisions can counteract negative self-talk. Visualizing yourself successfully completing tasks can also build confidence and reduce fear. In overcoming hesitation, it is essential to be compassionate and patient with yourself. Buddhism teaches that the path to enlightenment is a gradual process, requiring time and effort. Hesitation is a natural part of this journey, and it is important not to judge yourself harshly for experiencing it. Instead, treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding you would offer to a friend facing similar challenges. Compassion towards yourself involves recognizing that hesitation is often a sign of growth and self-awareness. It means acknowledging your fears and doubts without letting them define you. Patience allows you to give yourself the space and time needed to work through these obstacles. By approaching your hesitation with compassion and patience, you create a supportive inner environment that fosters confidence and decisiveness. Hesitation is a common and natural response to the uncertainties of life. Through the wisdom and practices of Buddhism, we can understand the root causes of hesitation and learn to overcome them. By cultivating mindfulness, loving kindness, wisdom, and right effort, we develop the inner strength to act decisively and confidently. Practical steps such as setting clear intentions, breaking tasks into smaller steps, and seeking support further aid us in this process. Ultimately, by approaching hesitation with compassion and patience, we transform it into an opportunity for growth and self-discovery, aligning ourselves more closely with our true nature and aspirations. Lesson 6. Comparison. In Buddhism, the concept of comparison is deeply intertwined with the understanding of our true nature and the nature of reality. We often fall because we compare ourselves to others, feeling inadequate or envious, or because we compare our current circumstances to an idealized version of what we think they should be. The Buddha's teachings encourage us to let go of comparisons and to accept ourselves and others as we are. Comparison is a form of suffering that arises from the mind's tendency to cling to certain ideas and concepts. In the Buddhist tradition, this clinging is known as upadana, 
and it is one of the twelve links of dependent origination, the chain of causes and effects that leads to the arising of suffering. When we compare ourselves to others, we are clinging to the idea of a separate independent self and to the belief that our happiness and worth are dependent on external factors. The Buddha's teachings on the nature of the self and the nature of reality can help us to see through these illusions and to let go of comparisons. According to Buddhism, the self is not a fixed, unchanging entity, but a dynamic, ever-changing process. It is made up of five aggregates, form, feeling, perception, mental formations, and consciousness and is subject to the law of impermanence, which states that all conditioned things are subject to change. When we understand this, we can see that there is no inherent, unchanging self that can be compared to others. We are all unique, ever-changing beings, and our paths and experiences are equally unique. Comparing ourselves to others is like comparing apples to oranges. It is a futile and meaningless endeavor. Reality is not a fixed, unchanging entity, but a dynamic, ever-changing process. It is made up of the five aggregates and is subject to the law of impermanence. When we understand this, we can see that there is no inherent, unchanging reality that can be compared to an idealized version of what we think it should be. Reality is what it is, and it is constantly changing and evolving. Comparing our current circumstances to an idealized version of what we think they should be is like trying to compare a river to a static snapshot of the river. It is a futile and meaningless endeavor. When we are mindful, we can see the arising of comparisons in the mind, and we can choose to let them go, rather than getting caught up in them. We can also use mindfulness to cultivate gratitude and contentment by focusing on the blessings and joys in our lives rather than on what we lack or what we think we should have. Another powerful tool for overcoming comparison is compassion. The practice of opening our hearts and extending kindness and understanding to ourselves and others. When we compare ourselves to others, we are often judging and criticizing ourselves, and this can lead to feelings of shame, guilt, and inadequacy. Compassion can help us to see that we are all imperfect, fallible beings and that it is okay to make mistakes and to have flaws. It can also help us to see that others are struggling and suffering just like us, and that they are worthy of our kindness and understanding, rather than our envy or judgment. Lesson 7. Lack of Hard and Right Work The Buddhist teachings emphasize the importance of hard work and perseverance. The path of spiritual growth is not an easy one, and it requires a great deal of effort and commitment. The Buddha himself spent many years in deep meditation and contemplation, seeking to understand the nature of suffering and the path to liberation. His life is a testament to the power of hard work and determination. When we lack the willingness to put in the hard work and do what is right, we often stumble and fall. We may become complacent, lazy, or disinterested in our work and our lives. We may also engage in unethical or irresponsible actions, which can cause harm to ourselves and others. This lack of hard and right work can lead to a sense of purposelessness, dissatisfaction, and spiritual stagnation. To overcome this obstacle, Buddhism encourages us to cultivate a strong work ethic and a commitment to doing what is right. This means putting in the necessary effort and time to achieve our goals and fulfill our responsibilities. It also means being mindful of the impact of our work and livelihood on ourselves and others, and making choices that are ethical, responsible, and beneficial. The Buddha's teachings also emphasize the importance of balance in our lives. While hard work and diligence are important, it is also essential to take time for rest, relaxation, and self-care. This balance helps to prevent burnout, stress, and fatigue, which can also lead to a lack of hard and right work. Buddhism encourages us to find joy and meaning in our work and livelihood. When we can see the value and purpose of our work, we are more likely to put in the necessary effort and to do what is right. This sense of joy and meaning can also help to sustain us through the challenges and obstacles that we may encounter on our path. The teachings of Buddhism remind us that true success and happiness come from a commitment to hard and right work. 
When we can put in the necessary effort, make ethical and responsible choices, and find joy and meaning in our work, we can achieve great things and live a life of purpose and fulfillment. The lack of hard and right work is a significant obstacle on the path of spiritual growth and self-realization. When we lack the willingness to put in the hard work and do what is right, we often stumble and fall. To overcome this obstacle, Buddhism encourages us to cultivate a strong work ethic, a commitment to ethical and responsible action, and a sense of joy and meaning in our work and livelihood. May you all find the strength to rise, the wisdom to understand, and the courage to continue on your path. May the teachings of Buddhism light your way and bring you peace.